Okay, you are now live. You mean I wasn't live before? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, you are now live. Now I'm going to call the uh, meeting, the regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Orleans to one. It's now be seven o'clock. The um, notice was properly published on uh, December the 22nd. We have one item on the agenda. Now present are the uh, Board Secretary uh, Stacy Faber and the Building Commissioner of the town, uh, Thomas Evers, also besides myself, uh, members of uh, Cole, Law, Mulligan, and Eckholt constituting a forum. Um, Emily Van Giesen, who is the um, a clerk or secretary of the zoning board has requested to uh, be um, uh, uh, excused or she was actually recusing herself. So uh, we will uh, proceed with the hearing of case number 2145. This is an application submitted uh, on behalf of uh, Kathleen Hallstrom and Craig Hallstrom by Ryder and Wilcox for special permit as set forth in General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 9, Sections 164.21a, Note 5, and Section 164.44. Uh, right now, we understand that there is a single family uh, residence under construction, and the, the uh, property is also improved by an existing uh, boathouse and studio. Now, this application is to construct a barn. Now, when it, according to the plan, uh, all of which uh, was provided to the members of the board, shows that the barn and the, the proposed barn would have an area of 660 square feet, adding that to the um, uh, coverages of the boathouse studio and uh, dwelling, the uh, that the subtotal being 3,680 square feet, the total then would be 4,340 square feet, which exceeds the 4,000 square foot benchmark. Um, this property is located at 22 Jack Point. Night Road, which is Orleans map number 51, parcel number one. Does any member of the board have any communication with the applicant or any of the applicant's agents which um, would constitute a conflict of interest or should otherwise be disclosed uh, to the um, colleagues and to the public? Uh, well, Mr. Mardik, I did review the property and at the time, I did run into the owner and talk to him, uh, but it was purely impartial and I it didn't affect my decision one way or the other. It was just a matter of basically looking in to see where the barn was gonna be placed. And then I stuck my foot in the mud, which I had to clean my shoe later and then came home. So. <laughs> um, prudent due diligence on behalf of the zoning board often involves taking a view and sometimes it's impossible not either out, out of politeness or out of curiosity to speak with the owner or the applicant and um, there's probably nothing wrong with that. But from what you've disclosed, Mr. Warr, I declare that the entire uh, board is um, indifferent and impartial and we may proceed with uh, hearing probably by um, uh, listening to Mr. Little back in the seat. Mr. Chairman, David Little representing Craig and Kathy Hallstrom. Um, Craig and Kathy are, are taking part in this Zoom meeting as well as I. Um, thank you for um, your attention. As Kathy pointed out to me earlier today, um, our meeting this evening kind of pales in comparison to what's happening on Capitol Hill today. But um, that being said, Craig and Kathy are proposing to construct a barn, which will result in a building coverage of 4,340 square feet. As the zoning board is well aware, 
the the, zone, the bylaw allows for a building coverage up to 15% of lot area, but if you exceed 4,000 square feet, a special permit is required. And we exceed that threshold, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, by 340 square feet. Um, I am not sure when this provision of the bylaw was created, but I believe it happened not too long after the town adopted a 40,000 square foot minimum lot area. And what I would like to point out is that it's interesting that 10% of 40,000 square feet is 4,000 square feet. So I, I don't know where our forefathers came to the conclusion that this should be a threshold for someone to come before the zoning board. But that being said, um, that, that, and I, I've done this many times with the board, as you are aware, that that's my rationale for why the town adopted this. And we are exceeding that threshold by 340 square feet. Um, but our proposed total building coverage is 9.2%, less than 10%. The barn is proposed to be used for storage and will only be supplied with electricity. Um, Mr. Hallstrom is an avid, avid boater. Um, he has two boats that he proposes to store in the barn along with um, lawn equipment and things like that. It is proposed to be located in the southwest corner of the, exist, of the property where there is existing screening from the road. There is a very large sycamore tree on the corner of the property along with uh, two holly trees and three pitch pines uh, that are located between the barn and, and Jackknife Point Road. Both um, the Hallstroms and I have reached out to abutters to hear concerns or issues relative to the proposed barn. Um, the, the Hallstroms reached out to their immediate abutters, uh, the Cardidos directly across Jackknife Point Road for, from them, and the Cardidos indicated that um, they would appreciate uh, additional screening so they didn't have to see the barn. We're obviously amenable to doing additional screening if that's, uh, if that's helpful. Um, they reached out to the Summers Gills who live to the west of the property uh, to explain what was going on. And then I reached out to everyone that was notified by certified mail of this proposed application. So um, that being said, I, I am aware that there are a couple of abutters that you're probably going to be hearing from this evening um, after my presentation. So, I would like to address the special permit criteria and, and then end with a few comments. The, um, as to the adequacy of the site, the site is adequate for the proposed barn. The total resulting building coverage of 4,340 square feet is 9.2% of the buildable upland. The site is suitable for the barn as it will the barn will comply with all horizontal and vertical dimensional requirements of the zoning bylaw. There will be no additional impact on traffic flow and safety. We believe there will be minimal impact on neighborhood visual character while the barn will be visible from the road. The, the design is traditional and the applicants plan to keep several mature trees along Jack Bank Point Road, which will provide natural screening. The property is served by a Title V sewage disposal system in town water. All stormwater runoff will be contained on the site. Utilities and public services will not be impacted by this project. There will be no noise or litter associated with the proposed barn other than noise impacts during construction. And as to the impact of groundwater quality recharge volume and water quality of coastal and fresh water, the, the barn is located well away from any resource areas. The remaining work that's being done on the property has been approved by the Conservation Commission. So, um, in closing, before I turn it over to questions from the board, I would like to point out that 
that for those of you that visited the site, there is a very large front porch. And this front porch adds depth, it's add, it adds character to the site. Well, the, the front porch on the site constitutes 315 square feet. And we are asking for um, relief for 340 square feet for the construction of the barn. So that being said, um, I think our, I believe our request is very reasonable. And, and as I said, Craig and Kathy are taking part in this Zoom video and can answer any questions along with me. So that being said, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it over to you and the board for questions. Very well, and uh, I have no questions. Um, does any member of the board have a question? Mr. Cole? No questions. Mr. Wall? Uh, no questions at all. Let the record reflect that Mr. Cobb has joined the uh, 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 meeting. And Mr. Cobb, have, have you heard the presentation? He's muted. Mr. Mosin, do you have any questions? None, no. Uh, Mr. Cole, do you have any questions? Just um, one. Um, the, so the um, abutters would like additional screening. So the question is, um, and I've looked at the plans, was there any other option? It's other than to build the barn in the front of the property? Um, so they, Ms. Eckholt, they, they built the new house within pretty much within the existing footprint of the existing mm -hmm. dwelling. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there was a lot of thought given to the location of the barn, mm -hmm. but we've put it in that corner of the property because there is existing screening. And mm -hmm. um, a, as I mentioned, um, both Craig and Kathy wanna be good neighbors. They've, they've spoken with the Carditos across the street directly across the street, they're, um, they're going to be putting in additional screening, they, they'll adjust driveway locations. Um, they are hoping to move into this neighborhood and become part of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there any other, I, uh, Mr. Tauber, have you, uh, can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Um, I apologize, but what is the distance from the river, the high water mark to the nearest point on the barn? Um, I'm going to get my scale out, Mr. Tobb. So bear, bear well, with me. You can me. take it plus or minus, but uh, oh, no, no. I just, I just, um, I just need to get the correct scale. Thank it you. It is approximately 290 feet. So, so that's the reason why conservation was not needed to be involved. Is that correct? Yes, it is, sir. And um, the characterization of it as a barn, as opposed to a shed, a boathouse, a storage shed, et cetera. Uh, is there a reason for that, uh, using that descriptor as opposed to any other? Well, I think if you look at the architectural plans that were prepared by Karen Kempton, I would probably look at this and refer to it as a barn. Uh, it's it's going to be used for boat storage. Craig has two boats, a uh, lawnmower. Uh, they're going to store kayaks in the loft. So it could be called a garage. It, it's similar in size to a garage. It's a garage is probably a hundred square feet less than this. This is longer and narrower, but and, the, and the Hallstroms were hoping to have a have a look that could be called a barn. And, and I, I, I don't really know how else to answer your question, Mr. Todd. 
Thank you. I'm just educating myself at your expense. Would it, uh, or at the Hallstrom's expense, perhaps, uh, would it have made a difference had this been, would it make a difference to the board in any way if this building, instead of being called a barn, were called a shed or a garage? No. No. Fine. Fine. Uh, I, th I think Mr. Little's point was that if we didn't have that front porch, there would have been an ex extra allowance for square feet, which would have, uh, under which the uh, barn or shed would have been able to be uh, constructed as a matter of right. I think that was the suggestion, David. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm satisfied. The question really isn't the positioning of the barn, which is right at the, at the uh, southeast corner of the 1.3 uh, acre lot. The question really is the, ex the barn using uh, an excess of 340 square feet over the, the allowance. Anyone else have a question? Then uh, I'm going to ask if anyone else wishes to uh, comment in favor of the application. Is there anyone uh, participating? Uh, I let the record reflect that the uh, uh, Ms. Faber can correct me. I have no correspondence or uh, written correspondence in the file concerning this application other than the application itself and the plans uh, to support it. Is that right, Stacey? That is correct, unless um, something's come in in the past since before, uh, right before New Year's, but as far as I know. Okay, then the next under those circumstances, now I'm asking whether there's anyone participating in this virtual meeting wishing to speak in opposition or in commentary to this application. Mike, I have uh, Roger McDaniel um, who raised his hand, so I'm going to allow him to talk. Yes, please. Mr. McDaniel, are you present? Muted. He's muted, yeah. McDaniel, you may speak. Okay, thank you. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm speaking in opposition. Uh, my neighbor, I am a, a neighbor, not in a butter, but a neighbor on Jackknife Point Road. You want to num which number are? Uh, I'm number 37. Very well. And I want, want to say we, we, are, we welcome the Hallstroms. Uh, we look for, you know, my interaction with them so far has been, has been great. Very happy to have them here. Um, the, we were, my wife and I were, not quite sure how to respond uh, because we're not crazy about the, the size of that facility in that location of the proposed barn. Our neighbor, uh, William Langley, submitted a letter to the Board of Appeals dated January 4th, which you perhaps did not receive. Um, um, and I just wanted to sort of, if he is on the line, ask him to, to make his case. If he is not, I will be happy to read his letter. That would be wonderful if you would. Okay, um, I, and I'm. This is the letter he wrote, so it's going to be speaking with his name and his voice. Um, but my wife Joan Morgan and I agree, um, and he wrote uh, to the New Orleans uh, to the Orleans Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is William Langley. My wife and I own the property at 32 Jackknife Point Road, around the corner to the west and south of Number 22, the Hallstroms property. My wife and I certainly do welcome our new neighbors, the Holstroms, and look forward to meeting and enjoying their company. So I'm sorry to be objecting to their application for a special permit to exceed the building coverage limit to construct the building in the southwest corner of the property at 22 Jackknife Point Road for the intention of storing boats and trailers. Beyond the fact that the 4,000 square foot building coverage limit was put in place for specifically preventing exactly this land use, 
it would appear the request is quite unnecessary. The property has an existing boathouse and an existing dock. In boating season, the boats will likely be there. At least, at least one could probably be in the boathouse in the off season. Trailers could be located elsewhere on the property, tented or uncovered without any need for a building. Nauset Marine East, a fine commercial boatyard is available just about one mile north and would accommodate these needs at a modest charge. Most folks don't want to park their trailered boats right in front of their houses. It doesn't look nice when they're there, fine when they're not. That problem is only amplified if a large structure to enclose them is put there instead. It never leaves, boating season or not. It is a permanent obstruction in the front yard. While the proposed building may not appear to be directly in the front yard when the Hallstroms view it from the front door of their lovely new house, it is in the front yard and does appear to be right directly in front of the house for everyone in the neighborhood who lives to the west and the south of the property and would have to pass it head on to reach Barley Neck Road. That accounts for 14 of the 20 residents' properties, which are to the west and south on Jackknife Point Road. That's 70% of the neighborhood. This proposed building would, in fact, essentially block out the view of the new home itself as everyone approaches and passes the property from the southwest. Since this prohibited land use is exactly what the regulations have targeted, and we neighbors rely on the zoning regulations, and with alternatives readily available, which will avoid the need for the building, I would suggest and certainly hope that the special permit request not be approved. Thank you. That's his letter. To which you concur completely. Yes. Is there any, anything further that you wish to talk from Mr. No, that, I, I don't wish to add anything else. Does any member of the board have any uh, questions of Mr. McDaniel? All right. Uh, Mike, I have uh, Topper Roth. Um, I'm going to let him speak. Oh, good. Uh, hi, everybody. I, uh, I, I'm the Hallstrom's, uh, one of their abutting neighbors at uh, 18 Jackknife Point Road. And I was just going to uh, request to do something similar to what uh, Roger just did, which was to read someone else's letter. <laughs> Uh, because I don't think, I, I don't think Jennifer Peters is in on the meeting, is she? I can't, I can't see who the participants are. So that's why I'm asking. I have several people that are on, uh, that are on phone numbers that are just listening in on via phone. Uh, so I don't oh, know okay. if one of them. Uh, okay. Um, So I, I just uh, wanted to request to do this so that her opinion could be registered. I did see her husband earlier today and asked if they were going to attend the meeting and he indicated that he didn't think so because I guess Jennifer's voice is, um, uh, her speaking voice is not holding up very well these days. So, so with your permission, I would just read that um, if I can find it <laughs> um, so that her voice could be heard. Mr. Ross, are you at 16 Jack Knife Point Road? I'm at uh, 18. 18, 10, okay. Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, but he's reading a letter from a person that's um, quite at, at a different address. And I, I wish he would point that out to the, the that, board. That's what I need, I need to know is how- Oh, I'll sure. The, the, Peters, the Peters are at 36 Jackknife Point Road. Okay. All right. Okay. This, this is a letter that, that Ms. Peters sent to, to David Little. So he is aware of it. I, uh, last I heard, I, I don't, know that he had had a chance to respond directly to her, but I, 
as I say, I just wanted to read it into the record if that's okay. Yes, please. Yes, okay. Uh, it reads, Dear David, we do, we do have some concerns with the proposed barn. The main concern is the placement coupled with the size and height of the proposed barn. Given there is already huge new construction on the property, this additional structure right at the bend of the road would diminish the bucolic Cape country feel of our neighborhood. The charm of Jackknife Point is in its rural ambience with partially hidden homes and a lack of quote in your face unquote suburban structures. Hopefully a scaled down version with a better placement for the barn can be found. It is our understanding that the law requires 4,000 square foot maximum building for residential property. We trust that the law should and will be upheld respectfully, Jennifer and Mike Peters. And that is the end of her letter. Very well. And what's your position, Mr. Roth? I'm sorry? And what is your position? Uh, I have mixed feelings about it. I, I feel that, uh, you know, for the most part, people should be allowed to do what they wish uh, with their property. Uh, I, 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 if I were the Carditos, I would share their concern about uh, it being kind of right in their uh, front, front view, uh, but perhaps that could be resolved with the additional screening that was uh, mentioned earlier. I didn't view the- uh, may, I, may I be heard? Uh, who, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Uh, this is William Langley. Yes, Mr. Langley. Thank you. For some reason, I have not been able to uh, uh, get the volume up, and now I have been, and I appreciate your unmuting me. <laughs> uh, the- uh, I attempted to get on the Zoom part of the call and uh, haven't been able to, so I apologize for that. Um, and I appreciate Roger McDowell's uh, reading my letter uh, to you all. And um, I, just by way of introduction, I suppose, uh, I would simply point out that uh, we, although we live in Stamford, Connecticut, uh, we became seasonal renters in East Orleans and Jackknife Point in 1977. Uh, subsequently, we purchased a, a home in uh, Cedar Cove in uh, 1982. And Subsequently, again, purchased our our house uh, property at 32 Jackknife Point in uh, 1991. So that's that's 30 years, and uh, it's been a wonderful a wonderful place. Uh, so we're well familiar with the property uh, that the Hallstroms are uh, developing. Uh, my letter, unfortunately, uh, was not able to be submitted uh, in kind. I uh, will do that in arrears, if I may, and uh, be happy to do that. Um, I guess it speaks for itself. I hope it does. Uh, we look forward to... Uh, coexisting happily with our new neighbors uh, certainly do. Uh, but this is, is a problem. Uh, it needs to get resolved. Just because something might be able to be done doesn't necessarily mean it should be. Uh, if the barn is truly necessary, I guess it could have been done as uh, some sort of adjustment to the plan for the house. And um, 
I guess I'll just leave it at that with a letter submitted. If I may uh, submit a uh, hard copy, I'll be very happy to. Thank you. Very well, Mr. Wayne. Uh, your, your letter has been re uh, 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 considered that the uh, language of your letter has been uh, considered, and, and your letter may, letter be, may be received and will be, and will be uh, uh, joined with the with application. The application. Um, um, and placed in the file. Is, is there an, another person on the telephone? I, I'm hearing an echo. Is, is there someone at 774-448700? Zero who wishes to speak. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, hi. This is Abby Summersgill. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we're at twenty. We're at twenty-six Jack Knife Point. Just the other butters. Uh, of the Hallstroms? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> and I apologize for coming very, very late to an idea that might resolve uh, people's issues and uh, ours to some extent uh, with respect to the barn. Craig had let me know that the barn was going to be 24 feet tall. And I hadn't really realized how tall that was um, until I looked at our own garage. And we don't have a second story in our garage. We just have a, uh, a little flat area above where the cars are, where we then store things that fit up to the peak of the garage. <clears throat> so it's a much, it's smaller, it's shorter. And I'm wondering if that would be a possibility that Craig and Kathy might entertain, that they could have just the um, garage part with a peaked roof rather than a second story. They could store things in that peaked area they could store their kayaks in slings along the side of their boathouse or along the side of the barn, uh, whatever. Um, it's just a thought because it is a big uh, barn and it would be, and I love the cupola on the top, I think, and the, the way they designed it architecturally, I think is very nice. And it's a real effort to make it fit into the neighborhood. But if it could be just the one story with the peaked roof, uh, it would, I think, make it a little less obvious in the neighborhood. The only other point that I would make is that when we come out of our driveway, we see the barn right in front of us. And so and it, I don't think it can possibly be screened on both sides. That would make it look very odd, and they wouldn't want to do that. And so for us coming out of our driveway, it's right there in front of us. And so that's why I was thinking maybe if it were shorter, smaller, in, in, and not having the second story with the windows and all of that. And I apologize that I didn't bring this up earlier, but um, I only thought of it literally today when I took a look at my own garage. So that's all I have to say. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, from the field, uh, points out that the height of the proposed barn, just a little, is... 24.7 feet according to the plan and which is 
roughly the same height as the new building. So I know that, uh, and everyone involved in the hearing could recognize that the height really wasn't a consideration until Ms. Summersgill mentioned a, uh, a possible adjustment. In other words, the relief that the applicant seek is for the footprint itself of the barn being 660 square feet. It does not take into consideration the fact that the proposed height is 24.7 feet. Therefore, uh, the uh, zoning board is not concerned with the volume of the barn, although maybe the neighbors are. You want to comment on that just a little? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, with respect to um, Bob and Abby Summersgill's concerns, when they come out of the driveway, obviously they're gonna see the barn, um, whether it's 20 feet tall or 24 feet tall, they're still gonna see it. I, I think that um, the more important issue that we face here is I don't think people want it, really wanna see it. We've heard from a number of residents on the road and we could provide screening not only on the portion of Jackknife Point Road that the Summers Gills live on, not complete screening. They, they would see some of it when they come out of their driveway and we could provide additional screening on the remainder of the road for the people that live down closer to Pleasant Bay that are going to be driving by it. Um, I, I will re reiterate that um, the person most affected, the Carditos across the street, the, the Hallstroms have worked with them and they plan to put additional screening in. They plan to adjust the location of the driveway. So it's amenable to um, not only them, but the Carditos and provides as much screening as they can. Um, I, I am more than happy to uh, uh, continue this. If, if you would like to see a plan that shows additional screening that uh, neighbors could review. But um, I, I think it's a, I mean, given the fact that, as, as I mentioned earlier, they have a, a beautiful front porch on this house that just adds depth and character, which is 315 square feet. And the barn itself, is 340. We're 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 exceeding it by 340. It it, it seems to be a minor concern, but um, both the Hallstroms and I want to do whatever we can to, or I want to help them as much as I can to move into the neighborhood and become the good neighbors with the rest of the people that live on Jackknife Point Road. So. Um, I, I'm not really sure how to answer these concerns, but I, I given the, the um, special permits that come before the board on a regular basis to exceed this 4,000 square foot trigger, which I explained very early on in my presentation, how, how I believe the town came to adopt it. Um, I think this is a very reasonable request, but I, I want to reiterate that both Craig and Kathy and I are more than willing to work with the neighbors to um, make this become a reality. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Little. Uh, are we going to hear from Joseph and Anna Cardito tonight? No, I've, I've emailed them. I've, I've, um, I've spoken with Joe on the phone. Um, and they're comfortable. They, I mean, Craig and they're comfortable with the comments that they've received from Craig and Kathy. I, I believe that that's what they told me, and that's all I can say, Mr. Chairman. Uh, um, Mr. Chair, um, it's Sarah. Uh, Joseph is on the phone, and he has the or on Zoom, and he has the ability to speak. Oh, great. Good. Yeah. Hello. Well, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. So. So our original concern was the impact on the neighborhood for the, because of the proximity of the, the barn to the road. Uh, you know, most of the structures in our community are, are in some way covered by 
by trees or shrubs. Or in fact, many you, you can't even see or just get a glimpse of it. And to keep that context for our neighborhood, uh, what I had suggested was a screening of some sort. The, the trees that are existing there that I remember uh, is are tree trunks primarily, and they're not gonna do a lot of coverage. So additional, additional screening in, in terms of trees and shrubs would really be helpful. And I'm thinking of anybody walking or, or driving on Jackknife Point into our community so that it's somewhat muted. The, 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 the visual impact is somewhat muted. And that was my original intent for the comments that I have provided. So, anything else? I have no questions. Does any member of the board have any uh, uh, questions or thoughts as to how we decode this problem? Um, I have one more question, if I could. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's a follow-up on the question I asked originally, sort of, um, if there were any other alternatives. One of the letters said there is a boathouse already. Um, and I just wanted to know um, is why it's not adequate. Um, if, I, if I may, Ms. Eichel, it's the boathouse is very small. It's 10 by 12 feet. Yep. Um, it, it literally cannot, st it's, it's, a, it's more or less a shed with a small deck on it near their dock. The, the boathouse is not sufficient to store anything. And, and it cannot be sort of in the back of the property. It can't be expanded or built onto in the back of the property. I can say unequivocally, the Conservation Commission would, would not absolutely allow not allow that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Mulligan, proceed. Yeah. Um, David, I'm, I'm struck, I, I agree with your point that uh, a reduction in the size or the height of the building is still going to leave a building that's visible, but there's a dramatically different impact between a two-story building and a one-story building. As I look at, the, as I look at this map, uh, the, the barn appears to be 25 feet from streets on both sides of Jack Knife Point Road. A two-story two building, 25 feet away, really looms over you. Um, and it has a much more dramatic impact than a one-story building does 25 feet away. Um, I just make that observation. I, I'm, I'm stuck on the point that you made also that our, our purview is um, square, the footprint. <laughs> and, and, uh, but the neighbors have raised this uh, question, and their, and their question seems to, seems to be totally on visual impact. Um, and I'm sympathetic that a, a two-story, 25, 24 and a half foot, two-story structure on the corner of a property is really defining of the property. I agree with you, Mr. Mulligan. Uh, I know we've segued into that question of volume, but that was the way I hear the commentary by several of the neighbors that the really the, um, the size of uh, the, uh, the elevation of the uh, boat storage facility is of more consequence. It, it, it occurs to me that the general idea that the boat would be stored in the new barn rather than on the top, as I think I see in the Photograph that came with my application package, um, probably up under a roof rather than even down at Nosset Marine is probably a good idea, as long as the uh, structure itself doesn't shock the neighborhood as being a form of the Taj Mahal. Um, I, I need. I think the board needs a little more commentary from some of the objectors or commentators concerning Ms. Ab uh, Ms. 
some of Gill's suggestion that the height of the, uh, whether there would still be an objection if the height of the building, the proposed building, were one story rather than two. I, I think that would be very helpful, Mr. Chairman. Um, um, I know it, you may not have worked, you may not have worked those numbers. Mr. No, no, I, I haven't, but it, it's not, it's what I would like to point out. It's not a two story structure. It's a one and a half story structure. There is no, there, there's not a two, they're not two full floors. All right. Um, but, All right. But, but, but I, I, I agree. I would welcome commentary from the abutters to that extent. Uh, Unmuted. If it's, this is Bill Langley, if I may yes, add sir. something. Yes, sir. May I? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm just struck by the fact that um, there's a, seems to be a fundamental underlying assumption here that that everyone has a right to put a boat on the property. Uh, it isn't, that's not really what should be driving this. I mean, uh, Nauset Marine East is a mile or less away and, uh, you know, storage there, I've done it. I've also had boat on my property hidden in the trees, a uh, uh, hundred feet back from the road. Nobody ever saw it. Um, and as I said earlier, unfortunately, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And I think that, you know, screening for this is certainly necessary, but its adequacy is a matter of opinion. And um, unfortunately, I, I think the design, I love the architecture on this, but it, it's just, it just doesn't work in that location. And if there's not another location that it, in which it would work, then I think we've got to go to plan B or C, which is, you know, maybe Nauset Marine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Mr. Hello. McDaniel. Yes. Uh, actually, it's John Kelsey, Mr. McDaniel's neighbor. My name is John Kelsey, and I'm a, a, a butter. A Thirty jackknife point low. I am. That's exactly right, and I'm an a butter. Yes, sir. And uh, I've lived in that house for 29 years, and I love Jackknife Point. This dilemma we face tonight needs a little history explained. A number of years ago, I can't remember how many, there was a building boom on Nauset Heights. Several small houses were demolished and replaced by larger houses which seemed to dominate the neighborhood. They were all in compliance with code, <clears throat> completely legal. The neighbors were not happy uh, with what was happening to the neighborhood and began to clamor. Articles began to appear in the local press. Town hall began to take notice. Citizens from other parts of the town began to realize that similar things were happening to them. The citizens petitioned the town for some sort of regulation which would help retain existing character of the town. Many options were considered and eventually the limit of, long, of lot coverage was agreed, proposed and confirmed by vote at town meeting. So here we are. The Hallstroms are good folks and we welcome them to Jackknife Point, but we have the same concerns as the folks on Nauset Heights from a decade ago. The plans for the construction show the barn, which we're discussing this evening and included calculations of site coverage. 
The plans were presented to the building department for their approval for construction. The department determined that they could not issue a permit for all 4,340 square feet and that something had to be done to reduce the total to less than 4,000 square feet. That apparently was the elimination of the barn from the construction request with hopes that it could be accepted by the community in a future appeal. That's where we are this evening. The town has rejected it and we are asked to accept it. Let's look at the current conditions. The house is now fully framed, roofed and enclosed. We can see its full size. The design appears to have been driven by the wish to give as many rooms as possible a view of the water. This concept produces a narrow and long house. The lot is 169 feet wide. Subtracting the setbacks from each property line gives us a buildable distance of 119 feet. The house is 110 feet long. It is possibly the longest house visible from Jackknife Point Road. The proposed barn to be located in front of the house is an additional 30 feet, all visible from the road. I come to my point. The town has dealt with this issue and established very clear rules. Do not exceed 4,000 square feet. The building department has spoken clearly on this case. Do not exceed 4,000 feet. There is no hardship in this case. I speak for the good of our neighborhood and I implore this committee to do their job do not exceed 4,000 feet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. Mr. Chairman, may, may I speak? Yes, Mr. Little. So um, it, it, just, just as an aside, it, it's kind of interesting. About 25 years ago, Meyer Singer and I represented John Kelsey when he was building his new house on Jackknife Point and Mike Peters, who was also taking part of the, taking part in this, hired an attorney to um, fight his building of his new house on Jackknife Point, and Mr. Kelsey prevailed. And every and now Mr. Kelsey and Mr. Peters go kayaking together. So it's kind of interesting about how people get welcomed to the neighborhood, but things seem to get worked out over time. But that that being said, um, what I would like to point out to the, the zoning board again, 4,000 square feet is a trigger. It's a trigger that brings people before the zoning board so neighbors have the opportunity to speak about what's happening on the property. And that's why we're here this evening. And as I pointed out, the 4,000 square foot trigger came about when 40,000 square foot zoning was adopted. They imagined that 10% of that would be a reasonable figure not to exceed when you're building or constructing something on a piece of property. We are proposing 9.2% of coverage on this property. It's larger than a 40,000 square foot lot. It's not an unreasonable proposal. That being said, I, I would like the opportunity to work with Craig and Kathy and, and, and possibly come back with another proposal. I, I, I hear what, what we're hearing. I, I hear what people are saying, but um, I disagree that what, what they're proposing complies with all horizontal and dimensional requirements. It's, it's strictly a trigger that brings us before this board. And it's unfortunate that Craig and Kathy have to be put, th put through this to move into Jackknife Point. 
Um, I only hope that it, it, it doesn't hurt neighborhood relations, but I would like to request um, a continuance to reach out to neighbors and work with Craig and Kathy to maybe come up with something that might be a little more reasonable from the neighbor's perspective. Me personally, I think this is a very reasonable proposal. So um, I, I would like to um, take the opportunity to ask, either ask for a continuance or hear from other board members before so, or in particular, hear from other board members before so um, to hear specific concerns relative to the, to the specific proposal before you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Little, uh, my thinking is that Mr. Uh, Kelsey uh, brilliantly stated the case. Uh, I under, uh, understand that genesis of the uh, 4,000 4, 4, uh, 4, square feet being uh, tied into the, uh, the lots which were 40,000 square feet, but the zoning board is not dealing with a 10%, dealing with a 4,000 4, Square, square foot, which is completely liquidated and definite, and uh, the zoning bylaw doesn't provide. Well, if you're a little bit over, or there's a, a five or seven or six six hundred square foot allowance, so that you're still okay. Um, Mr. Kelsey's right. Um, all of this is put into a. Um, the cauldron of the neighborhood. And we've had the benefit tonight of hearing specific remarks from the neighbors and a good suggestion from several of them as to, and, and I think that you have the ability and uh, to uh, work with the neighbors. I'm absolutely convinced personally from what I've heard that the neighbors uh, want to welcome the Halston with open arms, but are concerned about the positioning of the barn. The Eckholt has explored that positioning and that, uh, oh, with her questions, uh, which I think several of the board members probably, and, and I being one of them, um, shared that whether there was another place the place to buy. Um, generally, I think it's, a, it's the building itself and accessory use to be uh, uh, helpful and um, suitable and appropriate for the hostel. But putting it into the uh, categories that we deal with the special permit is troublesome. And especially if you were the objection. Uh, that's my thinking. I would be inclined to allow you uh, at, at least a month to come back and to see whether um, the reservations that some of the neighbors have can be alleviated. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman, but when you said the neighbors have suggestions of how to improve it, um, I think it was only the Summers Guilds that had a, a suggestion of how to improve it, not any of the other neighbors. Well, no, no really, there, there was. There's just the, uh, the, the screen was, was part of it. Well, we, but we, I, from, from the onset of my presentation, I proposed additional screening, if you remember. That was always there, I realized that. Still came up again. In other words, uh, one neighbor did mention that this is what something we will see when we go down Jack Rice Road. So, so that being said, Mr. Chairman, could I respectfully request a one month continuation, but beforehand, could I hear from the other zoning board members as to their concerns about the application? So only if uh, any uh, of my colleagues wish to comment, I have. I, I desire to comment, I've done it. Uh, Mr. Mordick, I would like to comment Please, Mr. Wall. Basically, my comment is I totally disagree 
with Mr. Kelsey's comment <clears throat> that this was rejected by the town. In fact, the towning, the zoning board regulations were established and approved by the town. And one of those items that was specifically said is that if you exceed 4,000 square feet, then a special permit can be granted. So there was nothing in the town regulations, as he alluded to in my opinion, that if you exceed 4,000 square feet, it's rejected. The proper thing occurred. They presented their case. It went to the zoning, the building inspector who looked at it and said, well, it's over 4,000 square feet. You need a special permit, which they applied for. So as far as I'm concerned, he complied with the requirements of the town and did not reject the application. That's all. That's probably a more accurate way of putting it. Sir. Mr. Marnick, could I be heard, please? Yes, Mr. Wolf, uh, Mr. Sharp, please. <clears throat> uh, the question before us, as I hear it, is whether an extension will be granted or whether we're going to rule on the application in front of us. And as to the application in front of us, I would like to call the members' attention to the assertion that there will be minimal impact on the neighborhood visual character. And what we're hearing, at least from those who we've heard from, is that there will, the question of what is minimal is what is before us. And so I'd like to address first the question of whether we're granting a continuance or not. And then if we are, we can have concluding remarks or suspend or whatever we do. I apologize for taking as much time as I just have. I'd like to call the question on whether we're going to have a continuance or not. Very well. But I may be calling too early, and for that, I apologize. Very Mr. Well. Taub, I, I was just hoping to hear comments from the 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 board members. Um, I I I would certainly expect that I we would be granted a continuance in a situation like this when we're trying to work with the neighborhood. Um, I was merely trying to reach out to the board members to hear if there were any specific concerns that the Hallstroms should deal with uh, prior to a continuance. Thank you very much. So in response to that, I would say as a board member that the question of minimal impact is what I would be focusing on relative to this application. Thank you. Very Thank well. you. I think that's all that need to be said, Mr. Todd. Mr. Cole? So the question before us relates to lot coverage and anyone with a lot area of greater than 27,000 square feet can come before us and ask to exceed 4,000 feet of coverage because their lot coverage would therefore be less than 15%. So the question really is about size. Um, I'm sort of flabbergasted that through all of the commentary we've heard tonight, we haven't heard any comments about the footprint size. We haven't heard any comments about proximity to the street or a request to move it further from the street. So I'm sort of wondering what the real concern is. Quite frankly, a, a barn, a garage, a detached garage like this to store boats, I'd much rather see that structure than see boats sitting outside. Generally, I'm in favor of the application, and I guess my only curiosity is to whether there's consideration to move it further from the street. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, then, oh, I, on the request of the applicant to uh, postpone and continue the hearing uh, till uh, for a month, so the first meeting in February. Uh, is there any discussion on that request? Then uh, I have one comment, yes. which um, <clears throat> I think <clears throat> I, I guess I have no objection 
to continuing it. But I think that we have to realize that we're coming into a, Z a 41B case, a 40B case that could go for several weeks based on past experience. Uh, and I want, wouldn't want this to cloud that. Um, I just want that to be recognized by the chair, let's say that, that we do have that issue coming up. I think on the 20th and based on my previous experience it lasted for like two or three months. So uh, that's my only comment. On the other hand, I have no objection to a continuation. It, Mr. Chairman, it, it, is it possible to con continue it for two weeks or is that not a possibility? No, 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 that, that's not good because uh, we, we are going to take a 40 B And I do want to set that time aside since there will be some, uh, if, if, a, a lot if, of uh, significant public input. I don't agree with Mr. Wong. I don't anticipate that we'll need uh, to do that for months, but I do want to uh, keep that um, uh, two weeks from now sacred. For that. Okay, I guess my only request would be if we, if, if it is continued to that same date, if we could, I'm, I, I'm up, I'm being hopefully optimistic as I always am. I, I would request that we could be first and hopefully come in with a resolution that the zoning board and the abutters were happy with. Uh, uh, I'd like to accommodate your request, but it would only be, uh, we could only do that if the zoning board had reason to believe that this application was now unconstructed. So I don't so, know how you could do that. Thing. So continuations go to the end of the, the, the new agenda? They don't go at, at the beginning of the new agenda? No, no, no. Rule? No, well, no, generally it would go to the beginning. Okay, well, that was, that was what my do, request was. If you, but if you're not uncontested, then um, then we're crowded into uh, the the other hearing. That's what I'm concerned about. You know, I, I want to provide that with complete integrity. Can you do a month? Please. Very well. I'll move it. All those, all those in favor, and we'll call the. Uh, the uh, board, uh, Mr. Marnock, uh, in favor of granting the continuance, Mr. Paul. Aye. Uh, Mr. Wall. Aye. Ms. Echo. Aye. And Mr. Mulligan. Aye. And Mr. Cobb will record you as present. Thank you. Very well. Then we'll Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. We'll see you in a month. Thank you very much. Thank you for all participants and my colleagues. Good night. Uh, Mr. Evans. Good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> I thought you were looking for recognition. Well, thank you for, for being present and uh, supporting us. Happy New Year. Same for you. Um, is there uh, any member of the board who would appreciate my providing uh, a summary of the 40B procedure uh, in writing in advance of the next year. If it's not too much work, I would. I'm going to try to put that together, Ms. Echo. Uh, I, we, I've um, since I've been on the board, we have considered uh, two of these, and the executive summary of it is that the statute, General Laws for uh, Chapter 42, provides in part that the permitting process is done completely as, as a streamlined measure uh, by the zoning board. Completely. So that means that by the time that we're, and we have the packages, I haven't looked at it quite yet, but the um, applicant.
patient should have been vetted by all of the uh, town agencies before it gets to us. Uh, I have, uh, will probably invite commentary by uh, the personal appearance for any of the agencies who wish to come. Uh, but we need to have that, that kind of input because uh, conditions can come out of our decision and those conditions usually are as a result of the vetting process with the uh, other agencies such as fire, uh, police, uh, uh, conservation. Or, or. So uh, that's for our education and uh, so that when we permit, if we do, it's uh, thorough and complete. So, but I will provide that some, some of them. Maybe that's what, George, maybe that's why the previous, um, the hearing you referred to went on for such a long time, because the, the ducks were all over the row. Well, um, that's basically true. There were at least 10 agencies, 10 commissions in town, <clears throat> plus that provided specific comments about the 40B application. Uh, and my point is, one of the bigger issues happen to be with respect to the septic system, which may go away this time, because I would presume we would not be worried about that detail since we have town sewers. But on the other hand, it did take six meetings. Uh, it was very, uh, the decision itself, I'm sure you're aware of, it was number 1677, was 18 pages. Yep, and, yep. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, uh, and and and, we, and I had and I had to do that, but, but to bear in mind that well, the last time we did it was with Habitat for Humanity, and those folks, um, those folks know what they're doing, and made the whole process not necessarily green, but certainly um, it was a, a pleasant undertaking because they knew the drill and knew uh, how to handle uh, the, per the permitting process. So, uh, yeah, I think we ended up with a six or seven page decision. But the fact of the matter is, um, with the input of the other agencies, it, it was pretty, we were, we were done with a lot of that, those conditions uh, before we even started. And we were really, uh, at our hearing, it was a, lesson of everything that can happen. And that's the way I would like this coming hearing to be. The, uh, a, a last good chance for people and, uh, to sound out their thinking, public and the agency, on what is the right thing for uh, the application, its processing, and the task. So that's the way to do it. I think you're, that, you're... That's, my, that's, that's my intention, George. Yeah, and I think your comment to provide information to the board is excellent and would probably help to Good. specify Good. that. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's, that's, that's really all the business we've got there. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion uh, carries unanimously. And uh, thank you for all your help. <laughs>